You are listening to the Game Like Training podcast, or you're watching it as well. And in this show, what we do is bring you information and education on golf practice, golf learning, golf psychology, and more things golf. What we're trying to do with this show is share with you evidence, research, and proven strategies that can help your golf practice or that can help your golf coaching. I'm your host, Matthew Cook. And I'm the co-host, Eric Zeigel. It's our goal to bring you the best information and strategies to help coaches and players. And we're extremely excited about our guest tonight. We have Chad Phillips here with us. Uh, Chad is a Golf Channel Academy lead coach, director of instruction, and also a game-like training partner. That's right. Good to see you, Chad. Absolutely. Thanks Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. So, um, Chad, if you don't mind, before we get going, if you can tell us a little bit about your, uh, your history and your background. So, f- f- for me, what, l- what led me to golf instruction was actually just sports in general. Um, actually, growing up, had, had just as much passion towards, towards baseball and grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Thought I'd be a Tiger someday. <laughs> um, but after doing a little bit of travel ball and I, I ended up, I, st- I stopped playing baseball my sophomore year of high school, and um, just I would say size was an issue. Um, ran up against some big boys, and so golf and, and baseball were running parallel. I decided to take on golf, ended up playing college golf, turned professional after that, got my head kicked in trying to make money <laughs> playing, like a lot of players, and um, and and defaulted really into coaching so i didn't grow up going i'm going to be a golf coach someday um but but like a lot of coaches were failed players yeah, you true. go out and you try to make some money and um and after playing and and trying to play a couple of times i went back i, I guess i didn't get enough the first time to be honest with you <laughs> i was 20 i had already started teaching a lot but by 26 or 7 and i was teaching to really fund that um I, I stopped playing for four or five years, and, um, and then I decided to do it again, play a little bit again, part-time, but I, again, I was already pretty deep in teaching, because um, I didn't, again, didn't learn my lesson the first time around <laughs> playing, <laughs> tried it again, uh, but, but that was a good experience, uh, that, that led me to, um, that's what led me really to um, my introduction to Dale Lynch, Van Lynch, and that's really when my coaching star. I was already looking for answers, um, had already um, joined Proponent Group, mm-hmm. and as you guys know, I mean, there's tremendous, that's a tremendous network, you know, and, and the likes of uh, Henry Brunton, and obviously Cameron McCormick was involved, and they were... Um, Plug in for Proponent Group right there, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Proponent Group members, that's right. You know, and, and then and then start running into TPI guys, and then hey, you know, it's seeing starting to see a shift, and I think there was still a little pushback then on on the whole athletic thing, but I mean, you could see it coming with where Tiger had taken the game. When I met when I met Steve Bann and Dale Lynch, I mean, they had done their thing at the Victorian Institute of Sport, coaching alongside other Olympic coaches, yeah. and. Um, and so the whole athleticism thing in, in, in my mind was like, this is going to be a big deal, I think, in golf. And, uh, you know, and after coaching with them, um, did a couple of different projects, full-time academy. You guys have done the academy thing, and, um, and, and we experienced that. And, uh, we uh, sure did. <laughs> good experience, good learning experiences, yeah. not, not where I wanted to be ultimately long-term, and so ended up here. And um, I've coached at a couple different places and then was fortunate enough to meet Ian and, and Matthew here. You know, and that opens another door. I think that's the cool thing about golf. Opens up another door on how players can learn. Yeah. Cool, so, man. Definitely. Cool. I'd say, so, the nice intro there. That was cool. Uh, nice to see, like, the, the transition from where most people, most coaches come from, which is, you know, trying to play. We all think we're going to have that put at the Masters for the win one day, don't we? But, you know, most of us end up going into coaching in the end. Um, Absolutely. So, um, with your experience with uh, junior golfers, junior golf development, because you, you've worked with, I remember you were mentioning uh, Stephen Dale, mm-hmm. and you worked a lot with, with Dale Lynch, and, you know, th- those guys worked with a lot of tall players, and with, when you were involved with them, 
and you were around that whole, that whole experience of these, the Aaron Badley, Jeff Ogle, the Kevin Nas of the world that were only young kids at the time mm -hmm. and they were with Dale and he took them uh, through his coaching strategies and their philosophy as well as them probably just being good kids and good players, you know. Yeah, that's got to be part of it. And and taking them to being top 50 in the world on the PGA Tour. And it, it, I think it's cool that you are around that because you've got, I think, more tacit knowledge on junior golf development. So with, with that being said, um, what did you see from a junior golf development perspective from your time with Dale Lynch working with those players from kids to, to major winners on the PGA Tour. What did you see from a junior golf development mm -hmm. standpoint? You know, um, I asked a lot of questions about this. So first of all, um, if, we, if we start diving into the importance of making mistakes, I mean, that was one of the first things that stood out with, especially with, with Lynchy when I was working with him. I mean, he, and, and, his, and his son is quite a good player and plays in Australia. Um, yeah. And he's huge on letting his players screw up. Really? And he actually pushes them to do that. You know, so regularly he's putting them through challenges that, I mean, if you're working with Lynchy, for instance, you're not hitting it straight. <laughs> you're learning to move the ball. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I think what was cool about them and, and the knowledge that, that they gained from this is unlike a lot of tour player or tour player coaches, they didn't, and no knock on anyone, just they developed those players into tour players. They didn't, and, and I think that's a different animal, like a Cameron with, mm -hmm. with Jordan, than somebody who is, a, who is an established coach that just ends up working with players on yeah. tour. So mm -hmm. that perspective goes, that question goes pretty deep. Um, there's a lot there, but I would say the cool thing was uh, he wasn't afraid um, for practice to get a little messy. Yeah, let's put it that way. Yeah, that's cool. And that was and 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 he and he expressed the importance of that. He would take his own kids out. It was really, I mean, just to give you an idea where he was. Nice contract with Nike, coaching a bunch of tour players. Jeff's a U.S. Open champion, three-time World Golf champion, and he makes his kids. They have to find balls on the first hole. He has six kids. They got to find the balls they're playing golf with. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, That's he's cool. like, all right. So they're running down number one. They're looking in the woods. They find balls. They got a ball to play with. He wants to That's appreciate cool. the game. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Right or wrong. I don't know what it does, but it was pretty interesting. I think, it, <laughs> yeah. It, and, you know, you, met, you mentioned, like, it is a different animal, isn't it? Because you get coaches yeah. that are good coaches. They've got good information, good knowledge. And, and fantastic coaches, but they start working with a player that's already on tour that, or that's already good. And most of us have, ex no, I shouldn't say most of us, a lot of us have experienced that. Sure. But then to, to work, to build a program, a junior mm -hmm. golf program, and to work with these kids and get all of the elements in for them to go from this six-year-old that just whacks golf balls now and again <laughs> right. to to a major winner it is a different animal I, I yeah it's cool that you mentioned it or you said it that way i think it's yeah. really cool and just and just no doubt listening to the the other thing and i think i want to say and i i could butcher this but at the victorian institute of sport they had a mission statement that was something around excellence in sport and life yeah. so it was they they were very good at determining Jeff's this way. This is Jeff's personality. This is what Jeff needs, and Aaron's this way, and Aaron needs this. And they were not getting taught the same way. That's awesome. Definitely not. I mean, com just a completely different approach. That's great because you talk about kind of him, you know, letting players fail. Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, that's it's hard from a coach's perspective. Sometimes you want to step in. Sure. When you're watching them to a certain point, you're like, ah. Oh, you know, you feel like it's reflecting on you as a coach, but having that ability to kind of step back and let them um, kind of experience that, not only does it obviously build psychological uh, habits that they need long-term as far as being able to compete at a higher level, but it's also good for them to, to have to, to deal with it in that moment and try to come up with a solution That's right. before you kind of step in and have to provide an intervention of some sort. Right, and I think from, I mean, 
from a junior golf perspective, letting kids, I mean, I think it's a cool experience, for instance, U.S. Kids Golf, that the parents get to caddy. Yeah. I just wish that the parents didn't give any information. Yeah. Um, and, and to... That steps into his next question. <laughs> <laughs> you just teed it up for him. <laughs> and, and we'll get to that. So to, to double up on this, here's a cool... So, so Ryan, Dale's, one of Dale's boys, quite a good player. He's won... A couple times, I believe, on the Australian PGA Tour, and I, I don't know a lot about that tour. Uh, he played in major when when Dale was over here, and we were at we were up at the Cliffs in, in South Carolina, and had the academy there before going to Tampa. Ryan played in major southeastern amateur events, big events. Dale would let him screw up in the tournament, caddying for him. Okay. Like yeah. if he's got the if he's choosing the wrong shot, the wrong club, he's like, I let him go. That he'll learn faster that way. Yeah. Oh, completely. And and Ryan was on board with it. It was always a funny story to hear them talking about it. You know, he's like, I'm at the rice planters and I'm on 12 and I got an important shot, and he just lets me butcher it. You know, but <laughs> cool. but I mean that's how far he actually he actually took that. Yeah. You know, but in a you know, we, I'm sure you got a question on this, but I I, I hear about it in the U.S. Kids and I'm like. Yeah. I mean, they're eight. Let them go. <laughs> they might screw up out there. <laughs> it's de- I mean, that's definitely the sign of a, you know, a great coach in mm-hmm. in in my eyes. Being able to allow them, even in like you said, that's an extreme setting in a tournament, but to allow them to make those mistakes because again, it is you want them to be able to learn from those experiences. Yeah. And if you're always telling them what to do and how to do it, then you're just teaching. You're not coaching. That's exactly right. But that, yeah, that teed up perfectly into my next question. So parent involvement, it's obviously there's a lot of research and and stuff behind the importance of, you know, parents in junior development and their influence over um, just golfers or their their kids in general. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it could be an incredible, it could be the best day of training and you have an amazing breakthrough with a student and they get in the car and one question is asked or one look is given and it can kind of ruin that whole experience. So, you know, I guess my question is, with the junior golfers you've been around, do you have conversations with the parents as far as kind of their role? Because we try we try to use, we use Edify, plug Edify. Edify plug, thank you, Spencer. We use, we use Edify to, to try to make it pretty transparent mm-hmm. with the parents so they're involved in, in seeing what is going on. Um, and then we try to encourage um, parents to come to our junior programs and stuff. And um, we really haven't, actually in encouraging them to come, we haven't had as many who are overly involved in the actual program, if that makes sense. So yep. it's been kind of a nice plan, but I'm curious to get your take on, on what you do. You know, and uh, certainly Matthew's seen some of this. I mean, um, I guess this influence would come from working alongside Dale as well. So he's working with one of his tour players. And if, if he's had some amateurs that day, I mean, we're all standing there watching. And he's, he's fine with it. So, I mean, I've adopted that to where if parents want to sit around and watch, I'm come on in. I'm, I mean, I'm 100% an open book, and I will. And at this point, I'm not afraid to lose a student if someone's not on board with where I'm going. Yeah. Um, it's hard at first. It is hard at first. I mean, but, I mean, number one, if you believe in what you're doing and yeah. you're doing the research, you're doing the homework, and you know I, I'm helping this kid, what I'm doing is going to help this kid, you just have to stick to your guns. I've, I mean, I've certainly had parents debate with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and then some of them just, they just don't schedule that next lesson. <laughs> That's how it goes. I mean, but um, yes. Um, and I, I want them there as I do. And I, so I 100% invite them in because I want to educate them as much as possible. And I want to let them know it's okay when they're practicing something that we just worked on and they're not hitting it good. Uh-huh. I mean, because. The reality is, and if you change some, they might not be very good at it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how are they yeah. going to be? Yeah. Can you imagine putting I mean, someone in a completely different environment? And right. all right, I right, tell you what, let's go to a school setting. You've got a five-year-old in school, and you give them something for an eighteen-year-old um, who is doing an, a course in the same subject. Mm-hmm. It's completely different, and like, how can you expect this child to know all of the needed and the necessary things that are needed to know to be able to answer these questions mm-hmm. or to solve these problems they don't because they 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 haven't learned it yet 
So whenever you have a change and you're giving students a new problem, you can't expect them to come up with a solution straight away. You have to let them figure out through self, you know, through self discovery and through guided discovery with the coach. You got to help them figure out what the solutions are. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. This is a segment we like to call Game of the Week, and this week's Game of the Week is Par 18. Par 18 is a short game challenge. Uh, designed to help you get up and down more often. So you can do this on the golf course or on the practice facility. The choice is yours. But this is what you're going to do. You're going to set up nine different stations around the green. One all the way through nine. Try to make them different. Make sure the locations are not exactly the same. And then your goal is to try and just get up and down from every single one. And using a scorecard like this, or you can download a scorecard from our website, your choice. All you're going to do is mark whether you got a, not an up and down, you're going to mark the total number of shots. So from hole one, you might hit one chip and then you might put. So what you do is you go ahead and in hole number one, you write a two. The goal is to get a total of 18. That would be getting up and down from every single one. Take it to the range or the golf course and improve your up and downs. <laughs> This is probably in your own philosophy, but what do you think are maybe three to five elements or key things that should be in your program or, or in whatever you do to develop junior golfers? Um, good question. Three to five. Well, I mean... I don't know if I'd stop at three or five, but <laughs> you could. You could. Just but I, but I would say, yeah, definitely. Um, and as far and 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 so I'll start with as far as philosophy. My philosophy is constantly changing. That's the one. That's definitely happening. Um, you know, I think through. I did. I did some of. Hank Haney had a training program, and I did all the levels available when Tiger was working with him because, I mean, that was it. If, yeah. You know, it was if you swing it like Tiger, you're going to be really good. Yeah. But it didn't work out that way. <laughs> um, but um, so as far as philosophy, that that's that's ever changing in a junior program. I mean, goal setting for sure. Um, however, you want to. Um, However you want to convey that to your student, but I want to know what that player wants, yeah. okay? And you can go as deep as you want. Obviously, I know you guys constantly, and Matthew, the time we've spent together, I mean, that intent is so important, and it is. I agree. And, I, and I believe that the more you do this, the better you get at seeing it. I mean, it's like this player's intent is here, and yeah. it's pretty quick, you can see it. So, yeah. but, and then finding out what are their goals, where do they want to be? So I think that's important, Love some that. kind of session on that. Love that. Um, Love that. Athleticism, however you want to go about that. I mean, I truly want an athlete now. I mean, and if I can get them when they're young to actually go away and play some other sports, I'm oh. all for it. I was going to ask a question about yeah. that. <laughs> um, I think, who was it that said, give me an athlete, I'll make him a golfer. Give me a golfer yeah. and I'm going to struggle to make him a tall player. It yeah. might have even been, I may, I may have butchered that, but I didn't may have. I, mm -hmm. I have butchered that, but Butch Harmon said something like that. You know, getting, yeah, I mean, and, I mean, certainly you can get to a point where you have a, a tagline of some sort that is 100% that you're going to be teaching an athlete to play golf. I mean, that's definitely what it's becoming. If you watch golf now, I mean, that's definitely what it is. There are, there's a, there's a lot of athletes out there. Those are major athletes, and, and definitely Tiger moved. He, he, he created that shift. Yeah, he moved the needle there. No one was ready for what he actually brought. I mean, they just weren't ready for it. I mean, yeah, this is an absolute killer, and they're like, I mean, and when you had guys like Ernie Els sitting there in press conferences going, I mean, we're kind of playing for second that's like <laughs> pretty spooky out there as good as those tour players are so um definitely athleticism um so if you're setting goals and then your your athletic athleticism's in there um you have to put in the fun factor for sure um and i, I guess you'd be wrapping everything up so on course on course instruction and and 
that would be three big ones and wrapping all that up into a fun environment which is different for f- for everyone you know i mean i mean most kids when they're younger the f- i think the fun is very similar but as they get older what's fun changes um, i could not agree more yeah. i yeah um when they get into so we look at like the different phases of when they're participating when they're really young fun's like fun to them's running around and like throwing a golf yeah. ball yeah. <laughs> but then when it gets when they get to that stage where they're like you know what i want to get good at this now fun changes into yeah. like all right what's fun is for me to stay out here and really try and score 100 points on this challenge like for the, the i i I think that's incredible. Well, that's you can fun. even just the the vocabulary you use. Yes. You know, with little kids, you call them games. Mm-hmm. We're gonna play a game today, and it, it could be the same game, but with a kid that wants to be take it a little bit more intense, you call it a challenge. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So it like it can yeah. be a similar training model or training philosophy, and just the way you kind of tailor the language. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you can call yeah. it a test. You, you can just change that as well. So you got goal setting, athleticism on the course. And making sure that yeah. if we if we're gonna, I'm going to put fun in there for the fourth one, but knowing that fun's different, the type of fun is different for yeah. the type of golf yeah. you're working with. Yeah, and, and, you know, and then there's obviously so many layers. If you get into golf, I mean, the actual golf part of me that would be, I mean, I'm big on on learning shots. I just I've had a lot of success if I can teach kids when they're young to hit golf shots. They don't have to go out and play and shape it around the golf course. I mean, that's not when I'm, you know, hitting low draws into back left pins. And, but I want them to practice like that. So teaching them shots, one, that's fun. Um, but I think it's, I mean, incredibly helpful in their development and learning to just control the movement of the club. So like uh, an example, can you give us an example of, uh, of using, uh, learning shots like using that for someone who's watching whether you're a golfer or uh, whether you're just a player or a coach or a parent or what, whatever you are um, could you give someone like an example of using learning shots to help their development um like if you've got a, a, a kid, you're working with a student right now they're doing something and you're like all right i think this type of shot might so I'm always trying to, this, this can go in a lot of different directions. All right, so <laughs> I'm, always trying, <laughs> I'm, always trying to, I'm always trying to get to a golf shot. Um, that, and again, that'd just be my language, but I'm trying to get away from the technique and into a golf shot. That doesn't mean I don't care about technique, because believe me, I do. But if I can get a player to make a movement pattern change, all right, just change their motion, um, and, and I can do it with a golf shot, I'm, I'm going there. And I want to get there as quick as, as possible. Okay, so, um, I mean, a lame, a really lame example would be if someone's, if someone hits down a bunch, we know the ball is going to come out low. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get them to learn to hit high shots. However, I have to do that. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's one shot. All right, this is a high shot. Mm-hmm. Just to work on maybe in a more effective, more advantageous, like, attack angle. So then if you're getting on track, man, and then I'm using the numbers for sort of mini goal settings for them that, hey, let's see if we can get it this high, this high, and they see that number come up, and and then, and then that's one example of yeah. using it. This goes, again, in a lot of different directions. Um, just general development. If I get a player that can shape it and hit it high and low, I want that done regularly. It's, for me, it's just my students it's tend to keep things pretty neutral. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do I'll use shot shaping on the golf course when someone's really struggling to feel where the face is pointing. Mm-hmm. We'll practice some trouble shots out on the golf course. Cool. So it's just big, right? It's like, all right, we're gonna hit a fade, but you gotta hit a massive one. Yeah. So if you can't feel that face being open, then we need to sit down. And <laughs> 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 no, I mean, you, you get out there. If they gotta hit a big curveball, they're gonna feel something different yeah. than what's normal. And you're doing it in context mm-hmm. as well. Like I think that's that that's a big key is that if we can that what, what the what I love about this is that you mentioned on course. Well, I love all of it to be honest, but on course and learning shots, 
really marry up, don't they? Because like, mm -hmm. you, if you can put a student in the context of uh, what they're going to be faced with when they go and play in a tournament or when they go and play regularly, if you can make the environment represent what they're going to be faced with later, which on the golf course is as close as you can get because that's where they play, then you know you, you make that change. Essentially, you make that change stick yeah. quicker. One last question. Uh, I should have asked this earlier when we were on it, but uh, what was the coolest thing? You've told us one really cool, well, you've told us a bunch of cool stuff, but one thing that stood out a lot with, with Dale Lynch, what he did with the kids on the, on, on the first tee, they had to go get, they had to go get <laughs> golf balls. I think that's pretty cool. We got to do, we got to try and yeah. do that at the, at the academy. But what, what's one thing that you saw that really stood out that Dale did with the likes of Aaron? Badly, Jeff Ogilvy and, and Kevin Arn and those guys. What's what's one thing that really stood out to you that he did as a golf coach to them players? You know, he told this story. It's one of the coolest stories I've ever heard. And, it, and, it, and he's actually running a junior golf program now with this guy who was a tour player named Craig Spence. And, um, and I probably, I apologize to Lynch if I mess this up because the story was <laughs> fantastic. But... Um, Spence had, he, Craig Spence had um, some he, great player playing in like, I want to say the Australian Masters. Yeah. Okay, big event. And very good player, or else you're not there. And really struggling with his nerves. He got into the event, he's worried, his family's coming, he's stressed out, he's telling Dale, I can't do it. I cannot play. I can't go out there and play. I'm going to, I just can't do it. I'm nervous. I'm not going to be able to perform. And he's like, you're fine. It's you, your caddy. You walk inside the ropes, put your sunglasses on, and play golf. So he goes out, he plays. He's like first-round leader. So now he's like completely freaking out. So essentially this goes on and on and on through all three rounds, all right, where he finishes. He's playing well. He makes the cut. He's close to the lead. He's like, I cannot do this, Dale. I can't play tomorrow. He's wanting to withdraw, literally. So... Um, he said after the uh, third round, they're all going to go out to dinner, and he's like tied for the lead or close to, within one of the lead, either leading one back, all right, of like Norman, okay, Greg Norman. They can't find him. Dale goes in the locker room. He's there, and he's like, I cannot play tomorrow. <laughs> it's like there's no way I can play tomorrow. So the same story, and Lynchy's like, you know what? He's like, I just I can't go out there. I'm going to play terrible. He goes, you know what? You have no chance tomorrow. He goes, you're playing against Norman. He goes, nobody thinks you can win. Norman doesn't think you can win. You don't think you can win. It's no big deal because you have no chance tomorrow. And he said, and, and he says, thank you, Lynchy. And I feel much better. He goes out, long story short, he hits one in there like three feet and he makes the putt to like win by a shot. Oh, okay. really? All right, Dell's like, I just went the opposite direction of sports psychology because he was freaking out. He didn't want to hear that he was good enough. He just he just needed something to take the, the pressure off. And um, and the story is much better when he tells it, but he said um, but he said he literally had to talk him down. And finally, to get him to calm down that day, he just told him he has no chance. You don't think so? And so, I mean, thinking outside the box. You know, that was one, that's that's, that's one way to yeah, think That's a great the story. Box. Because he's like, I mean, all the time, sometimes that's not what people want to hear is that, hey, you can, uh, I mean, I think at times when you're, you know, that, that would be the whole, if you, you know, praising children and kids, what you can learn from that. I mean, you can lay so many expectations on them that it's, they struggle to perform. Yeah. So I think there, what happened was he took all expectations off of just them. Removed it off of it's them. like, just go put your sunglasses on. It's you, your caddy, play some golf. That's so cool. that was a, that was a cool story. So. Well, I think I think we're just about out of time. You go, you want to? Yeah, no, that was that was yeah. awesome. That was really good. Well, I'm excited. Uh, everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you uh, want to subscribe to the channel, you can check out more episodes just like this, where we talk about golf practice, golf learning, and all of the topics within them topics. So. Thanks for listening again. You can check us out on SoundCloud. You can subscribe on iTunes. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Chad. Absolutely.